Bye bye, Carbon. We're on the road with the Nash. Hello, everyone. Jesse and Melissa here with Adventure Endeavor. Today, we're going to be talking about our new trailer. So, if you've been with the channel for a little bit, you know that we used to have a 38 foot fifth wheel and we recently downsized to a 17 foot Northwood Nash travel trailer. And this video is going to be all about how we're doing. Are we surviving? Are we enjoying it? Do we like living small? Yeah, we've been in this trailer about a month now and this is basically just going to be about our thoughts after a one month trial period. So we made a list of several pros and cons about living in a tiny trailer and we're going to start that right now. Take it away, Jesse. So probably the biggest pro is the fact that we can go almost anywhere. We can go to any boo knocking spot, everything like that. Like this trailer is so small that it, it's like towing a small boat or something. And I've towed so many things in my lifetime. It is just simple. We don't have to worry about our overhead clearances. I mean, we go into parking lots. Like we went to in and out the other day, like right in the parking lot. And it was just no big deal. And in and out is crowded. So it's a lot less stress. We can get to more remote locations. We run groceries with the trailer, whereas what we used to do is we would get to our boot knocking spot and then we'd go out and run groceries or we'd run groceries beforehand and now we just take the trailer everywhere. We could probably go through the drive-thru if we wanted to. We, <laughs> depend, if it were a big enough drive-thru, we probably, we probably could. could. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it was just so much more difficult to do anything, run errands anywhere with the fifth wheel mm -hmm. attached because it's huge and now we can we can run errands so and, nice. and go you know drop off stuff at the post office and it's not all sorts of stuff all. and obviously as well like if you've been following the channel like we've been in Colorado recently with the weather changing all the time I just feel more confident towing a smaller trailer with snow and ice on the roads mm -hmm. and then on top of that too we're going through Colorado the Rockies so there's all sorts of different passes and stuff and mm -hmm. I don't even look at the roads anymore. I just assume, I mean, other than the million dollar highway, which we're nowhere near, mm -hmm. we can just take the road. The truck has plenty of power, plenty of stopping power, all of that, so it's just really nice. Yeah, we're not straining our truck anymore, which is really, really good. But, on the other hand, we've noticed, so this would be a con, we've noticed that it is difficult to maneuver around at times, and we're still figuring out like we're still, places are still finding things. Like that takes a long time. You mean like inside the rig? Yes, so we're getting yeah. organized and we're still, oh, this goes here, no, this is better here. And then it's kind of the same thing too. We're learning our little rhythm because we don't have a slide out. Mm -hmm. So it was like the galley kitchen is a little tight. Yeah. So, so it, just the, the less amount of space in here is definitely, Something that we are noticing as adjusting to, adjusting to definitely. It's a slight con. Yeah. But it hasn't been that bad. But that's that's going to be the biggest trade-off with going from a large rig to a small rig, like we just did. Um, you know, we're adjusting to it, but we are definitely realizing that we had way too much stuff in <laughs> the fifth wheel, and so we're getting by with much less, and we don't really need as much stuff as we used to have. I would say overall that uh, the pros outweigh the cons, kind of in that category. Another thing that's been a huge benefit of having this tiny rig is that mooch docking is so much easier than it used to be. We used to be stressed about whether we were going to fit in somebody's driveway no. and now we're basically the same length as our truck so... It makes it really easy and before we'd be scouting Google Earth and checking to see if there's any trees on the road or you know the four or five six roads that go into that place. We tried to stay at our buddy's house once and and there was three different ways to get to his house and we couldn't make it anyway so with the old fifth wheel so that was kind of a, a pain at times yeah. and now we've already mooch stocked once at our buddy's house in Colorado super steep driveway absolutely no way we would take our fifth wheel there it just it wouldn't happen the rear jacks would drag yeah. probably would hit a couple trees going in there yeah they were way up in the mountains and we wouldn't have been able to turn to make the turn turn around to back down their driveway yeah and the funny thing is is this little trailer backing into his driveway I could feel the little trailer pulling the ram because it was such a steep driveway. So it's like, let's triple the weight and then do that. Like, that'll be a great idea. So that has been really nice, the mooch docking. 
Yeah. And it's just really fun because it's just a really easy, nice way to spend time with your friends, but yet everybody has their own space. So it's just, it's been great. Something that we really looked for when buying this new trailer was a true four season rig. Something that was built high quality. And so the rigs that we found were Nash, Arctic Fox, and Outdoors RV. We bought a Nash. Mm -hmm. It was what was available. It was what we could afford paying in cash. And it's been great. So these, these, these rigs are made by Northwood and they do things a little bit different. So the whole underbelly is sealed and enclosed. And I know a lot of people say, well, my underbelly is sealed. Yes, but what Northwood does on top of that is they add some pink insulation underneath there. I found that when I was doing a little bit of wiring. And then one time we were, we were recently had a pretty heavy snow load on our roof. And so I contacted Northwood and I was talking to them and they were like, oh yeah, like, don't worry. It cannot snow enough for there to be an issue with the weight on your roof. And I was like, what the heck does that mean? And then they went on to tell me that they do their centers, so their cross beams, the way that the ribbed on the roof is, and they do them every 16 inches. That's like what's standard in a house, if you're building a house. Um, a lot of RV manufacturers do them 24 inches, so they're skimping down, they're going from 16 to 24, and then they do 3 8 inch plywood on the roof. So basically the roof is extremely strong, and it's held temps so well. I think the lowest we've seen is 15 degrees, and I think we got five inches of snow, and we were boondocking, so that was, and our, I think our heater kicked on twice in the middle of the night. Yeah, the interior temperature stays about 30 degrees warmer than the cold temperature outside, and uh, that's with the heater at the lowest setting. Yeah. Which is a definite change from our previous rig, where it will only get about 20 degrees warmer than the outside temperature. If that. Yeah. And the heater would be on all night. Yeah. And so it's definitely less drafty. It's really well insulated and not having a slide in here means that we're not losing heat out of that slide. Yeah, the, the slides, obviously there's a frame and they put rubber seal on each side. But when you have a slide, air is going to leak out of there no matter what, no, how, no matter how well the slide is. And we kind of wanted to try it and we like not having a slide to be honest. I mean, at times the space would be nice, but it's also really nice if you want to pull over and have lunch and your rig works well. You don't have to squeeze by to get in the kitchen or to the bathroom or anything like that. So mm -hmm. we're pretty, we're extremely happy with the quality yes. of the rig. And I would say that we're pretty happy without the slide. Obviously it's a give and take with anything. Yeah, it's nice that we don't ever have to worry about it breaking, the, me the mechanism not working for one reason or another. It would be nice if we had a little bit more floor space, but we're making it work. Probably our biggest con of this whole rig is something that we knew would probably be an issue and we bought it, but we did it anyway. Well, it's a con for you. It's not a big deal for me. Yeah, unless I squish you. Which happens or, on occasion. Or knee you or elbow you on accident mm -hmm. if I fall. And that is that I have to crawl over Jesse to get in and out of bed. That's kind of annoying. Like I do have a, like a wall on the side of me, so I can't like fall off the bed. So that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. really good because you don't want that happening. No, nobody wants that when they're sleeping. That's a, a rude way to wake up. And yes, I do sleep with my hat on. So I tend to go to bed early, mm -hmm. which is what you would think. Well, shouldn't he go on the inside? That wouldn't make that would make more sense. Yeah, but it would, it I wake sense. up much earlier than her. So it's either she crawls over me when I'm like just falling to sleep or I'm crawling over her when I'm getting up early to work out in the morning. So yeah, and he has a tendency to get up in the middle of the night more than I do. Yeah, I drink too many beverages before bed. I need to grow up and be an adult. <laughs> but anyways, that's probably our biggest con. And to be mm -hmm. honest, for me, it's not that bad. I don't know about you, but you know, like we just stated, I mean, that's, it's a trade off. We knew that buying a, a rig with a bed that you can't walk all the way around would have its challenges, but I mean, it's definitely cozy. <laughs> Another major pro of this rig. This is the dinette where we both sit and work all day long. So I'm just like over here doing the, my thing. And then I can reach over here to get some snacks. <gasps> Super easily. Look at that. How convenient. This is kind of a pro and a con. So in our toy hauler, obviously we had a washer machine. We have a video on that, so we'll link that for you guys. And it was nice because with 100, 100 gallons of fresh, we could easily do laundry on the fly, do a little bit here and there, and kind of keep up on it. 
But now, obviously, we have 50 gallons of fresh and we don't have a washer, we don't have space for any of that, so we go to a laundromat. So on one hand, we liked keeping up on it, but on the other hand, it's great because now we get it all done. So when we go to laundromat, we're doing all of our sheets, sometimes we do our comforters, all of our clothes, we fold, we dry them, and boom. Everything is done and it's great and it's finished. So it's just one swipe. So that's kind of a pro and a con. I typically do it and it doesn't really bother me too much either way. Another con about this wig that's kind of unique to our situation is our trash can setup. So in our fifth wheel, we had a cabinet big enough underneath the sink that we could put our trash can underneath it and keep it closed and you know away from the dogs and all of that. And uh, we don't have that in this rig. And in Blue's old age, he is bored and he has a tendency to get into the trash. He's reverting to a puppy again, which is cool. So we got this handy dandy trash can with a foot pedal and a lid, thinking that that would solve our problem. It doesn't. He's smart enough, he can lift this with his nose. So we had to get a locking mechanism to keep that closed. This should be pretty obvious with a rig this size, but we definitely have less separation than we used to. Get away from me. <laughs> I'm on one side of the rig and Jesse's on the other and I can still see him and hear him. Hi. <laughs> so the only private time you get is when you're in the bathroom by yourself. That's the only door in here. Another perk about living in a small trailer, you can wake up and then go straight to work. Another great thing about our bed being so close to our door in this tiny rig, I can lock the door from bed. Look at that. So the last and final downside of this small rig is that we wanted to maximize all of our storage space as best as possible because it's so limited. But since we did that, it makes it pretty difficult to access things when we need them. So we try to keep, you know, the extra stuff that we don't really need all the time under the dinette and it's kind of a pain in the butt to get under here as you can see i'm struggling with these cushions not a huge deal just kind of annoying but i kind of move everything out of the way to get you know some spare paper towels or things like that all right guys so those are just uh, our quick thoughts on our new small travel trailer and if you are curious our fifth wheel is officially for sale so somebody buy it. Let us know if you want it. We gotta get rid of it. <laughs> uh, it was a great rig. It served its purpose. We still love it. It's got the crazy solar. It's got all that good stuff, but we're living the, living the small life and we're enjoying it for the time being. Like always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know if you have any questions or concerns or comments or just leave them in the comments. <laughs> Talk to you later. Thanks guys. <laughs> <laughs>